Hello and welcome from Trey's Gaff. <laughs> um, it's the 10th, I think, is it, of September? I think so, yeah. Uh, I don't know what the heck's happened to the rest of the year because it's just... If anybody else is listening to this, well, when you listen to it anyway, I have absolutely no idea what's happened to this year. Um, we're into almost autumn now, or awesome, was the season <laughs> I, I invent. somewhere. Yeah, uh, or Sumner. Mm-hmm. Um, so we promised a number of times, and, and because of the lockdowns, we've fell behind with quite a bit of stuff, as you probably have yourself. Uh, but we've managed, or she's managed, Trey, that is, to, to, to drag me kicking and screaming to the uh, dictaphone again to, to start to do the work that we should have been doing that will benefit Trey, hopefully other people as well, but also it'll be a channel for our charity, the Stepping Stone 2 charity, which uh, we've kind of put a nice a wee bit. <coughs> now both got journals, each <laughs> one purple and one rose gold. <laughs> uh, one was supposed to have been damaged and not coming, but it arrived. Um, <clears throat> excuse me, so we're going to kick off with uh, part of Trey's journey through trauma and in the new environment that she's in now and how it's impacted on uh, that past and it was about a moment where she brought to me a realisation that she'd felt a certain way and maybe that wasn't the right way to, to, to feel or why she was feeling that way um, and it was around uh, she'd got immersed in um, an activity, was it art, colouring yeah, it or whatever? Yeah, do some coloured art. Yeah, and uh, three hours had elapsed and then she had this feeling that perhaps she shouldn't have spent that much time and should perhaps have been doing something else. So we're now going to explore that now, Trey, are we? Yes, we are. As to why that was. Um, and we hope and this is going to lead on to a number of other uh, podcasts <clears throat> and then eventually a, a, a larger one would be a great overview of uh, Trey's journey and also the kind of things that you can do yourself if you're struggling to, to, to help if you've been through a traumatic experience. So over to you Trey. Yes, um, within a few weeks of moving in uh, to my home alone um, um, I noticed I was doing something. Uh, I was cleaning in a very anxious way as in I felt I needed to do it and um, I was tying myself out. Uh, there was no um, you know, spreading it out and uh, tailoring that. And I picked up on that pretty quickly. I thought, I'm really getting quite stressed about this. And I did a small video on that and I tried to adapt. I thought, right, I've picked up on that. I've noticed it. But it's still there to a degree. Um, I'm a little bit better at managing it, but it's still there. And and like I said to you, I, I got myself engrossed in something. And then I thought, wait a minute, I was going to do something else, and I've I've lost the morning doing this. So, so the engrossment in the something that yeah. you were doing, and I'm assuming it's the artwork. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, that was something that was your right to do. Oh yes, yeah. And there was nobody else saying that you 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 should be doing this rather than that, mm. and you shouldn't have been spending so much time on that. You should have been yeah. doing this. Expand that a bit more. Um, well, that's historical, really. When I was younger, um, from a very young age, it'd be about six, um, I was sort of like given chores to do. And, and I mean, when I mean chores, I mean I was taught to cook and I started cooking for the family, uh, as in myself, my gran and my mum. I used to have to cook from scratch as well, you know, not packet stuff. Um, Hoover and Dustin, I mean, every year we used to paint. Uh, I were looking after the dogs, uh, so I had chores, washing, um, and back then it was a twin tub, so it was a, like practically an all-day session. Um, this was round school, weekends was uh, full of cooking and cleaning and such like. Uh, and my gran worked in service, which means she was cleaning for other people in their homes, so she had a standard. My mum, of course, got that standard from her, so I was at the bottom of the pile and... I was told how it should go. And if it wasn't right, then I was told to do it again. And then when I left home um, to live with my ex, uh, who, you know, eventually got married, um, he had a certain way of doing things. So if I, when I tried to do housework, he would interfere and tell me it wasn't right. And that was quite stressful for me. Now we worked shifts and what I started to do was when he wasn't in and I wasn't, and I was off work, I would do my housework then to try and avoid that situation. 
So whenever I was on my own, I had spare time. I was houseworking through 30 years of marriage. And when I was younger and I was off school and weekends, I was chores. You know, I had to fit them in. So that's basically been my life and <laughs> my conditioning to housework and chores. Now I'm living on my own and it's a completely different environment and a completely different situation and I've not changed yet. So this is really about the, the, the disentanglement of that conditioning that took place. And that's a lot of years of conditioning. Yeah, I mean, there's a lot of societal conditioning going on around that time and it still goes on now, but I think uh, a lot of working class families uh, most women that didn't go to work in the factories or whatever were at home scrubbing the step or, or mm. you know, taking the curtains down and washing them again for for whatever reason. Um, I know everything, including your knickers. Absolutely, yeah. yeah. I remember um, that. And I think, I mean, this is slightly aside, but I, I think I'd mentioned going back some time ago about watching um, ladies, women, whatever they call them, um, scrubbing the steps. And there was almost a sense of freneticism there to get this, this step scrubbed. Yeah. And the housework, you know, because, I mean, going back then, the housework wasn't as easy as it is now. No. Where, you know, a lot of technology come into it now, and the old dolly tubs, and, you know, you had to use them flipping, uh, what do they call them, them serrated things where you scrape something down. Oh, and, yeah, the boards. Yeah, and then the flipping uh, mangle. mangle yeah. Uh, so a lot of women that were trapped at, at home, um, probably got kids as well to, to look yeah. after if they were at school, a lot of anxieties uh, occurred and grew because they probably had that when they were children, they went into a marriage and they did the same thing again. So mm -hmm. it kind of echoes, for me, that societal thing. And a lot of women at that time were unhappy. So unhappiness... Uh, the reasons why you did divorce and the reasons why you moved here was to try to eradicate some of that unhappiness. Yeah. And closely linked to that unhappiness is the conditioning, isn't it? Oh, definitely. So tell me why you felt that at that time, that moment where you suddenly felt as though you shouldn't have been spending three hours doing your art work. Because it wasn't really an option for me in the past. Yes, um, I could do my arts and crafts during my marriage when... You know, I didn't have anything else to do. There was nothing else had been planned for me to do. <laughs> and so I had that time. Uh, but when I was on my own, I had chores to do because I was fitted in around somebody else, either to avoid asshole or because that's when I, yeah, I was told I had to do it. And now that I've moved them on my own, I don't have those restrictions, but I haven't <coughs> adjusted. And, you know, when you when I was sitting enjoying something, and I did, because I really like that photo, because it's, it's good for me. And then suddenly I looked at the clock and thought, oh, I had planned to do. So, oh, I haven't done that. And then suddenly I was stressed. I could feel this anxiousness coming up, because I hadn't done what I should have been, I thought I should have been doing that day. So, the... The stress you felt, <clears throat> I mean, this is going to be a much wider uh, topic. Do you, do you feel as though you've, you've ever had a time where you could just be you and not do things for other people, but do things for you? Now, a lot of people who uh, experience their difficult relationships, family relationships or marriage or whatever, that have had trauma, they tend to do the utmost they can to please other people rather than themselves. Now, you said there about having to do the cooking and the cleaning and all the rest of it. And, you know, I don't really question why your, your parents or whatever imposed that on you because it was quite normal, I think, around about that time. You know, we had to dig the garden and, and make the fire and stuff like that. But do you think that people who have had traumas and then go into relationships are more likely to put themselves on the back burner to make sure the other person's okay. And then by doing that, <clears throat> they're actually denying themselves a right in, in that relationship. Do you feel as though that that light bulb moment where you suddenly started thinking that way, it's something that you've never had, you've never been able to, to just do that and not worry about any recrimination? 
Yeah, pr pretty much. I think, um, and also because I had dogs, there's dogs growing up and dogs in the marriage and there's nothing wrong with having pets and that, but there is routines, you've got to look after them and and you maybe only got a, an hour or so, a couple of hours and then you had to stop what you were doing to go and do something else. So you never had, I never had the freedom just to focus or lose myself in something. It was always in the back of my mind, oh, I'll have to keep an eye on the time. You know, I always had a, a clock in my room when I was working, you know, doing my arts and crafts, because I knew I had to keep an eye on the time. It's always like that. Uh, you'd never totally relax and lost. So you mentioned about, and I, I think I, I mirrored that with uh, the um, activity of the lady on the step, scrubbing the step like yeah. Billy or... Do you... Do you think that the anxiety you were feeling um, at that time, after the three hours on the at work and the cleaning up you'd mentioned mm. prior to that, do, do you think that that freneticism was really uh, you trying to get away from yourself? The, the cleaning? Yeah, where you were doing it in a way where you were getting more and more stressed and more and more anxious. Do you think that was a medium for you to really just let go and express how you were feeling? When I was growing up, no, because it was a chore and had to be done and I was trying to work No, I'm out. going back to that particular but time you mentioned When here. I first moved in, yes, and, and part of that was because I was now responsible for the whole house and I had to make sure if it was going to be clean, I had to clean it. And I became anxious about that because I, it was the responsibility of looking after home on my own. And, and that that kind of like suddenly started to take over a wee bit. Instead of just relaxing into it, I was getting anxious about it. But you knew you were more than able to do all the tasks that you had to oh, do. Oh, yeah. Now, again, I'm going to get too deep because we end up in all kinds of different areas. But was there a fear um, that there would be some kind of... Uh, backlash, recrimination, or the fact you let yourself down by not being able to do something. Was there any fear in there at that time when you were anxious? Yes, it, it was the old fear. As if I don't, if it's not cleaned right, um, there's consequences. And, and even though there was nobody else there to see it, I saw it. So it was like that old stuff was coming back. Oh, oh I haven't done that right, or I've left that too long, or that should have been done by now. So if we sidestep slightly, and it's quite common, um, most bullies pick on people who um, are eager to please, and they're often quite uh, mild and, and you know quite relaxed and gentle people, and bullies like to, to, to go for people yeah. like that. And that's not a weakness, and that's what people have to understand. It's the bully that's weak, not the individual that's actually getting bullied. Do you feel as though because you're in a marriage, and again, we're not starting to judge things here, this is purely objective. Someone who is a control freak, a bully, uh, has a, um, a self-elevated opinion of themselves, that is with someone who has been through difficult times yeah. and they're aware of those difficult times, do you think a lot of the stuff you mentioned earlier there that made you feel anxious and, and you know, maybe not good enough, your self-esteem, your self-worth, a lot of that was engineered by the person you were living with who was able to pick up on how you were mm -hmm. and know how you were as well. And it was almost like you'd continued along that, that pathway where you were... Um, feel as though you weren't good enough or you had to do that to, to please that person or whatever. Do you think all that anxiety and all that, that past that you had there within all those years, and not just your childhood but also into your mind as well, do you think there was another layer added on to your past through that marriage? Oh yes, definitely. It's also like you extended it to an extent. You know, it did extend it because instead of getting away from completely from that I actually went into a slightly more subtle version of it <laughs> which and I didn't pick it up right away but yeah it was a more subtle version of what I'd been living as a child and I got to the point where I wouldn't do things 
because I knew I was going to get it hassle, so I wouldn't wash the my ex's clothes. Oh, I'm not touching them. You're doing them yourself. You know, there were certain things I wouldn't do because I knew I'd get hassle for it. Um, and it caused a bit of grief at times until eventually he just did it himself because I wasn't wasn't prepared to do any housework or anything like that when he was around. I couldn't I couldn't be doing with the backlash. Like, even if it was just the looks, <laughs> I couldn't be on with it. And, so, then, and then when it's all stripped away, yeah, and that person's not around anymore. Uh, you're not living the childhood that you lived. It's 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 past. Yeah. Um, where's the fear still in this? It's in the conditioning. It, it's kind of like it's it's been ingrained in me, uh, and because I've lived so long in this um, mental mode. I haven't broken out. I haven't. Part of me hasn't recognised it's not the same, and I'm still reacting in a way I used to. I always have done. If there's anybody out there who's had trauma, um, and there's different levels of trauma. We all know that. There's, you know, so you could say, well, my trauma is worse than your trauma. Uh, trauma is an experience that, that if you listen to this now, you, you'd be perfectly aware of. It, it, it leaves a legacy, and it's a legacy that won't go away. Um, and there's different times of day can suddenly hit you, you can have a long, long time where it won't hit you, and suddenly something else comes along and then bang, you're there again. Now, how can you possibly disentangle all the stuff that went on before you moved in here? What can you do? Well, Have you tried CBT? <laughs> Don't start flipping to CBT. That's cognitive behavioural therapy. Change the way you think. Like it works. Um, the only th the one thing I did was finally notice what I was doing. That was within the first two or three months. I thought, wait a minute, are you? What am I doing? I recognised it. And the reason I recognised that I was doing it was because I was exhausted. Um, once I recognised it, I thought, right, OK, I need to stop doing this because I'm not doing myself any favours. I'm just running myself into the ground. Um, so I did ease off on that a little bit. However, if I get up and I think, oh, I, I need to do the bathroom today, wondering to me, because I've got plants in the, uh, my craft room as well, check on my plants. Oh, look, I've just got that. And then sit down and start doing that. And then think, wait a minute, I have plant to do. Oh, I've left it. It is such a day. I should have been doing the bathroom. Now, that's what I haven't, that is the thing I haven't um, got round. Now, I had thought about maybe having a certain day to get myself into a routine, but you never know what's going to happen in a day. And, you know, I'm going to be okay on that day to do it physically. Uh, so I'm not sure if that will help. I think we discussed uh, yesterday or the day before, I can't remember now, uh, to do with routine and structure. Yeah. And um, how when that routine and structure is removed, uh, a little bit like a, a boat with no sail, yeah. and you're kind of just all over the place. And you'd said that y you would like to get a journal that would encompass y your daily kind of thoughts yes, and things yeah. like that, that may well get you back on a, on a path that's less fearful. I mean, I'd promote that because, you know, I think it's a very good thing for anybody at all who's been through difficult times. How do you think that would help people, though? Well, I think uh, the journal thing, I'll just probably just briefly touch on it. It's something to do in more um, depth, I think, on a, in a podcast, because to me, a journal is all kinds of aspects, and that, that's how I'm seeing it. But I'm kind of open that I'll have, because it has week view and month view and all kinds of, it's quite a complex journal um, book we've both got. Um, when I look at it, I'm going to be using it for appointments, but I'm also going to look at it for routines. But also, there's going to be an aspect of looking at it, how I feel about routines and the benefits, but also the the not so good benefits, you know, the downsides of anxiety. And, and if I can see that pattern, then maybe I can break that pattern. Yeah, because one of the dangers you run when, uh, and it's, it's a classic, it's advice to people who are struggling with mental health issues or whatever, um, you know, you need, you need something to do. You need to, uh, you know, get out for a walk or you need to be, uh, do some gardening or, or whatever. There's a massive risk you're actually going to impose more um, conditioning 
uh, more anxiety, mm. um, fear as well. So you've got to get a balance between the two. Structure and routine are good. It gives focus yeah. and, and you know that there's massive benefits from it. But then too much structure and routine can actually get you back to where you were before. Uh, and then you're doing things because you feel as though you have to do them or you want to please other people. Yeah. And that's the bit you're going to leave behind. So I would definitely promote journal. And I've got one as well. <laughs> um, because I lost a lot of my structure and routine. Not, not so much in the latter stages of, of my working career, but, but prior to that where I was working pretty much seven days a week, I, I was lost without a structure and routine. Yeah. I was a little bit like I said earlier on there, like a boat with no sail, just kind of basically drifting everywhere and not really knowing where I was going to end up. Uh, still a bit of that now to a certain extent, but I think the charity itself, the fact that, that that's a focus, yeah. which is the reason why we're kind of coming back to this now. So let's go back to the moment, uh, the Episcopal moment, the, the moment of uh, enlightenment, light bulb moment that you were aware of um, some shift in you as a person. Now, you've explained a little bit, but you haven't really told me how you felt. What were your feelings? Um, when I first realised... That that was going on. Um, anxiety. Because I felt guilty that I, I'd not done what I should have done or planned to do. So what did the anxiety feel like? Uh, my anxiety always hits my gut. It, 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 everybody's anxiety starts different places. I suppose that mine's in my pit of my stomach. It's in, you know, and I, I get this tight kind of flipping feeling. Um, and I'm like, oh, and then I get tense because I think, oh, I to, you know, and, and, it, and it just, it feels like I'm tense and I need to do what I should have been doing. And then suddenly I'll jump up and I'm running off doing it. So, so the animation, the the, um, the the kind of anxious feeling, do you think that's because something's telling you to get away from something? What's it telling you? The, anxi the anxiety is because I feel like I should have done something and I haven't done it. And I think there's going to be a consequence to that. But that consequence isn't there now. It's just part of me doesn't know it's not there now. I still think I'm facing a consequence. So if that's the case, then there must be a trigger. The trigger is because I suddenly realised I haven't done what I, I planned to do, what I planned to do in, in that morning. So in the law of cause and effect, if you are in the middle of doing something and then, then that comes to an end or it's, it's you know, you maybe think, oh, wait a minute, I shouldn't be sitting here. Tell me a little bit about at that time what, what it felt like, feeling wise, not just anxiety, because anxiety is a state of, of being. Fear. Fear. Mm. Fear is a big one. Um, and fear can be created from very, very early on in your life by many, many different people. School, a lot of fear is built up at school, you know, the fear yeah. of not doing your homework, the fear of being late for your class. Then you move into, into work, the fear of being late for work, the fear of sleeping in. Uh, the good old alarm clock, which I don't miss now. Um, <laughs> I, I don't still need use one anyway. I still use one. <laughs> <laughs> you know, your whole life is pretty much set out that way, isn't yeah. it? And, you know, one of the things we're going to come on to, not right now, but is about taking the initiative to be the person that you have the right to be. Uh, there's many different ways of saying that. You know, you, you've got lots of books on it as well. But that moment where Trey um, felt that, would tell me that at no point in her life has she ever had the chance to be who she is and is <laughs> without the fear of recrimination. Mm. How does that sound to you? Oh, yeah, that's definitely the way it is. Do yeah. You, do you think there's many people out there, and I'm, skills are back now, do you think there's many people now I've gone to school this morning that run the risk of going the same way? Oh, yeah, there'll be plenty of people. You know, there'll be, you know, um, I was not unusual in the way I was brought up. Um, and I think there's more of it now, unfortunately. And, of course, plenty of marriages uh, went the way mine went, went. So, you know, that's not unusual either. So you've got the the fear of not passing your exams. Oh. You've got the fear of not, um, <laughs> you know, going to... Uh, Grammar school, because, you know, that's another issue again about grammar schools and secondary moderns. 
you know, if you go to secondary moderns, you're pretty much a thickie. Mm. If you go to grammar, you're part of the elite, yeah. uh, which isn't necessarily the case because a lot of kids actually become very, very clever later on in life. You know, they go into businesses and stuff like that. But fear is something we're going to come back to. Yeah. And we're going to explore it more um, to do with your your moment. But I would like you, this sounds like a counselling session, isn't it? <laughs> it's not. <laughs> I, I would like Trey, uh, we mentioned it a little while ago, to do a video um, about her... Um, gathering of plants in her home, her new yeah. home, and the reasons around doing that. Now, uh, not right now, because I'm just going to skim over it, because we've got enough on there to start with. People go for walks in nature. People take the dogs for a walk in nature. People go off on holiday to, to go into nature. There's a big thing out there where nature is, on the one hand, it's abused, and on the other, it's it's there because people need to get there because they're feeling stressed and anxious or whatever. But how many people actually walk through a woodland and notice the minutiae? Small things like a little mushroom coming through or, or, or there's a dragonfly or something like that. Yeah. Many people get stressed because they have to go and go in the woods for a walk just to put themselves right. Now, we're going we're gonna to explore that more and more because that's another factor of, of, of trade because she has also gone for walks in nature. And even though it's been enjoyable, she sometimes felt lonely. Yeah. And really, again, that's fear. Yeah. It comes down from fear. But the plant aspect, which you mentioned earlier, Trey's bringing nature into her new home. Oh, yeah. And by doing that, what do you think you're trying to achieve? Uh, balance, um, but... Making new friends? <laughs> yeah, there's that. But also uh, um, an enjoyment of, watch, of caring for something and watching things grow. Um, I enjoy that. I get a great deal of pleasure out of watching things grow. Um, and it's so relaxing. Um, and the focus is settles my emotions and my mind. Um, you know, it's just so nice. I, I, I mean, I, I'm very tactile with my plants, and I, um, you know, I, I do look after them a, a lot. I tend to check on them every day, and um, it'll be quite fun to do this video because it's amazing when I'm growing at the beginning. <laughs> <laughs> In fact, I didn't know what I was growing. <laughs> I locked them up. <laughs> when you when you go through difficult times, it's um, it's a great healer if you can actually give without expecting to receive. Oh, it sounds kind of religious, but it's true. Um, and I, I found my vocation working with people um, that we work with through the charity and have worked with in the past. Um, I didn't realise that at the time, but that was a tremendous um, uh, medium for me to uh, to give uh, love to people who actually didn't have any love or little love in their lives. And that in some obtuse way actually enriched me. Yeah. And in some ways, the plant aspect for Trey, I mean, she's only got imaginary friends, so there's, there's, <laughs> these are real, these are real friends, the plants. Um, you know, in, in, in some way, she, she's looking after those uh, plants, giving them, you know, TLC, um, and that in some ways actually enriching her as well. Yes. Which helps to release the emotions and also reduce the fear as well. And oh, I think, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and that's... I think we'll come back to that part. That'll be the next part we're going to move on to. Trey's going to do a video of that, so look out for that. Um, she'll probably show you some of the uh, plants she's got. Yeah, I'll be showing you the plants. I mean, we, we've got this on, uh, this joke going that eventually you'll have to fight your way through the foliage. That's right, yeah, yeah. <laughs> when get, you come in. Get rid of the three-piece suite. <laughs> so. Oh, yeah, I could put plants on there. <laughs> but I'm not... I mean, years ago, just... Just before we finished this years ago, this is what it's like, because I do like plants. I mean, I grew up, my uncle liked plants and grew. He was very good at it. And when I was younger, I used to help him slightly. And I think he came in then. But at one point when I was younger, um, living in one house, I had about over 30 plants grown, including an umbrella plant that took over and became a tree <laughs> in a corner. The birds used to flip him while hiding. That's how big it was. So, yes, I'm... Um, I, I have a little bit of a green thumb. 
Well, yeah, it's good. I mean, I've noticed that when I've come down, you know, you, you, you've definitely got the touch. Um, probably, you know, your Uncle Tom's. Yeah, uh, I think I learned a lot from watching that. him. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, um, if at the moment you are struggling with any kind of traumatic feelings or whatever, uh, just be aware of that anxiety. Um, and if you can't get on the beach or in the woods or whatever, uh, if you live in suburban areas mm -hmm. and there's some little out there, find a park or, you know, just maybe create your own little garden like Trey's doing yeah. now. Um, so, yeah, um, I think we'll round off now. Uh, we'll sum up what we Trey. Yes. Uh, <laughs> yes, we will, Andrew. <laughs> yeah, the, 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 the reasons why we started this are twofold. One is because it's helping Trey with her journey through trauma, but it's also feeding into the, uh, the stepping stone too charity as well because there are people that we look after yeah. and have looked after we we'll have the same situation yeah very very self same situations but not having enough tools to cope um and we have nigel at the moment who you've seen on the facebook page uh he lives a life on his own and there's many things that that we um will be talking about on this podcast some of which have been used with with nigel but there's many more that that we're trying to kind of create um, and introduce into Nigel's life because yeah. as he gets older as well and probably not as well, um, he's found it more more difficult. Uh, but he's doing really well. That's not meant to sound too too miserable. But he he, he still fights with similar things that that Trey's mentioned: fear, mm, um, yeah. you know, sadness, uh, grief. Um, anxiety, which is something he takes um, medication for. Um, so yeah, we're going to come back and we're going to start off from that particular point and we're going to turn it up with Trey's um, uh, journey through trauma. Anything to add? No, no, other than the fact I'm, in, uh, I'm kind of looking forward to doing these because it's not only is it useful for me, but I'm hoping that if people listen to these, it'll be useful for them. Well, absolutely, yeah. Uh, yeah, definitely. Because, I mean, everybody, anybody that's been in my situation or um, could be looking to get into my situ situation will be face, will face this. And it's that fear of not knowing what's coming. Definitely. Uh, I think one thing I'd like to add as well before we go, uh, trauma tends to have people develop a, a low self-esteem, low self-worth, they don't think they're of any major value. Not everybody, I mean, but but it, it is in there. It's one of the things that people tend to struggle with. And normally they take into relationships and then it becomes another problem because they're actually not feeling as good as the other person, not feeling as clever as the other person. Uh, Self-esteem goes down, confidence goes down. And then you end up in a very difficult relationship. If that person's not so good um, and isn't nice, then they're going to start to actually exert more pressure on you and more layers and more conditioning and more fear. Yeah. Um, so watch out for that if you're in a relationship now. If you don't feel as though you're good enough, get out of the relationship. Is that a wrap? That's a wrap. Thank you very much. <laughs>